Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is suspension systems. A suspension connects the body and wheels, absorbing shocks from the road to improve ride comfort, while also ensuring that the tires maintain firm contact with the road surface to secure proper braking and driving forces. This video will explain the types of suspension, the varieties of suspension springs, the function of shock absorbers, and structure and geometry of independent suspensions. There are two types of suspension systems, solid axle suspension and independent suspension. In a vehicle with a solid axle suspension system, the axles connect the left and right wheels, maintaining the proper position of the wheels while supporting the vehicle's load, and absorbing shocks from the road surface. This suspension system is primarily employed in trucks and some off-road SUVs. In trucks, leaf springs are used, while SUVs utilize coil springs. The sturdy axle connects the left and right wheels, allowing them to bear significant loads. However, since the left and right wheels move together as a single unit, the ride comfort is compromised. Independent suspension is a structure in which the left and right wheels can move independently. There are various types of independent suspension systems, including McPherson strut, double wishbone, multi-link, and others. Due to the independent movement of the left and right wheels, it generally provides better ride comfort and handling performance. Suspension springs come in four types. Leaf springs, coil springs, air springs, and torsion bar springs. Leaf springs consist of multiple layers of flat springs stacked together, and each spring flexes to absorb shocks. Leaf springs are capable of supporting heavy loads and are primarily used in trucks. Coil springs are formed by coiling spring steel. Coil springs are the most commonly used type of suspension spring in passenger cars. Air springs are pneumatic springs that utilize the elastic force of air enclosed in a rubber bag. By adjusting the air pressure inside the bag, it is possible to alter ride comfort and vehicle height. Air springs are employed in some luxury cars, as well as certain buses and trucks. Torsion bar springs utilize the torsional elasticity of a round bar. Although it requires space both in the front and rear, it allows for a compact suspension system. Today, it is not widely used. Springs have the characteristic of continuing to vibrate for a while once they begin oscillating. Therefore, in a car equipped with springs alone, vibrations persist for a while, leading to decreased in ride comfort. A shock absorber is designed to dampen this unnecessary vibration. When pushing water out of a syringe, significant force is not necessary. When filling a syringe with high viscosity oil, significant force is required to push the piston. A shock absorber utilizes the resistance, generated when oil passes through small openings, to dampen the unnecessary movement of the spring. A shock absorber is primarily composed of a rod, an outer shell, and a piston with a small hole in the pathway for oil flow. The small hole in the piston is referred to as an orifice. The inside of the outer shell is filled with oil. When the body or wheel moves up and down, the piston travels through the oil. The viscosity resistance generated as oil passes through the orifices functions as damping force. Generally, shock absorbers are mounted in parallel or coaxially with the spring and are damping the unnecessary motion of the spring to enhance ride comfort.
Before delving into the main topic, please familiarize yourself with two aspects of hull alignment. The tilt of the wheels when viewed from above is referred to as the tow angle. When the wheels are pointed inward towards the front of the vehicle, it is called towing, and when they are pointed outward, it is referred to as tow out. The tilt of the wheels when viewed from the front of the vehicle is referred to as the camber angle. When the wheels are tilted inward towards the top of the vehicle, it is called negative camber, and when they are tilted outward, it is referred to as positive camber. The McPherson strut was devised by automotive engineer Earl S. McPherson in the late 1940s. That consists of a strut integrating a suspension spring and shock absorber, knuckle, and lower control arm. They are widely adopted for the front and rear wheels of FF vehicles, and the front wheels of FR vehicles of small to midsize. The advantages are a simple and cost-effective structure, as well as high design flexibility due to compact size. The drawbacks include camber change characteristics and friction in the shock absorber. One of the crucial roles of suspension is to keep the tires perpendicular to the road surface. Currently, the suspension is not stroked, and the camber angle is zero degrees. The knuckle is fixed to the strut, allowing movement only along the axis of the shock absorber. The lower control arm undergoes an arc motion around the body side pivot, causing the knuckle side pivot to move towards the inside of the vehicle when the suspension is stroked. Therefore, when the suspension is stroked, the knuckle is pulled towards the inside of the vehicle, then the strut and knuckle tilt with the deformation of the rubber bushing at the body mounting point. As a result, when the suspension is stroked, it leads to positive camber, reducing the contact area between the tire and the road surface. During cornering, the outer wheel, which bears the load, exhibits a significant positive camber. To prevent this, in typical passenger cars, the suspension is set up to have a negative camber when the suspension is in an unstroked state. The negative camber on race cars based on production cars with McPherson strut suspension is so impressive and looks so nice. During the stroke, lateral forces are applied to the strut with an integrated shock absorber. As a result, friction occurs on sliding components inside the shock absorber, and smooth movement is impeded. To reduce this, suspension springs are installed with offset position to cancel out lateral forces, or low friction materials are used in the sliding components inside the shock absorber. Double wishbone suspension is a structure that features two arms arranged vertically. It is named so because the A-shaped arm used in the early stages resembled the wishbone of a bird. Due to its high design flexibility, it is adopted in vehicle models that require superior ride comfort and handling compared to McPherson struts. It is widely used in both FF and FR vehicles, for both front and rear wheels. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of camber change. If the lengths of the lower and upper arms are equal, the wheels stroke without camber angle change. Combining a shorter upper arm with a longer lower arm results in negative camber during the suspension stroke. Next, let's take a look at anti-dive geometry. In the case of not having anti-dive geometry, applying the brake produces a backward force to the tire's contact patch A with the road surface, causing a clockwise force around the vehicle's pitching axis and resulting in the vehicle dipping to the front. To alleviate this phenomenon, an angle of rearward descent is applied to the rotation axis of the upper arm, and an angle of rearward ascent is applied to the rotation axis of the lower arm. The intersection B of the extension lines of each arm rotation axis becomes the virtual axis for the wheel's vertical motion. This can be regarded as a swing arm with the intersection B as the pivot axis. When the brakes are applied, a backward force is produced on the tire at contact patch A, and a force arises that tends to rotate the swing arm counterclockwise. However, since the tire is in contact with the road surface and cannot sink downward, a force arises to lift the intersection B. This force helps alleviate the front dipping during braking, thereby improving ride comfort. In this way, with a double wishbone suspension, the length and angles of the upper and lower arms can be configured to achieve ride comfort and handling performance tailored to each vehicle model. There is no strict definition for multi-link suspension, and it comes in various structures depending on the car manufacturers and models. However, it offers even greater design flexibility than double wishbone suspension. Multi-link suspensions are particularly used in rear suspension of both FF and FR luxury cars. 
Let's take a look at the most common type of multi-link suspension, with two upper arms, two lower arms, and a toe control arm, focusing on toe angle control. When braking, backward forces are applied to the tire, but the vehicle body tends to move forward due to inertia. Since each arm's pivot incorporates deformable rubber bushings, the wheels rotate in the toe-out direction around the virtual pivot axis A, formed by the two upper arms. Because toe-out of the rear wheels compromises stability, toe-out during braking is undesirable. In a multi-link suspension, a toe control arm is added, connecting the knuckle to the vehicle body at an angle, to prevent toe-out during braking. During suspension stroke, the toe control arm pulls the front side of the knuckle toward the inside of the vehicle body, causing toe-in. This suspension movement enhances understeer tendency, increasing stability during cornering. In this way, multi-link suspension can exhibit various characteristics based on the arrangement of its arms. However, it involves a higher number of components, demanding precision in both parts and assembly processes, resulting in increased weight and higher costs. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.